and he's going fast. Folks, with us today is Francois Pervy. Francois, thank you very much for joining us on the Layback Bike Report. Thank you, and I'm very happy uh, to be here. Great. So Francois is a French uh, champion bicyclist, and uh, let's start, Francois, if we could. Tell us a, a little bit about your career uh, as a cyclist. Um, I, uh, I was, <laughs> not I am, I was a seven-time world champion on a track and uh, in a sprint events. Uh, I beat uh, two world records. Uh, 200 flying meters and uh, one uh, kilometer uh, time trial, stunning start. And uh, I won a bronze medal to Olympic Games and a bronze medal to Paralympic Games because I was the pilot of the blind main on the tandem. Francois, after such a distinguished career, you've retired from uh, professional cycling and uh, you found yourself uh, here at Battle Mountain in a recumbent, a uh, Velo Couché type of bike. How did you become introduced to recumbent bikes? Uh, it was uh, it was the uh, EUT University of uh, Annecy asked me if I want to to come to to become the the, the pilot of the Altair Six, and um, I asked uh, some question because for me it was uh, a surprise. Uh, um, I. I know anything about a recumbent bike. So I found it a very special, atypical thing and a very fun, funny. So I say, yes, I want, I want. And uh, after uh, I try, uh, I try the first time and uh, I training, training, training. And uh, now I am here. Yeah, so you found it interesting and fun. And uh, now you're gonna get into riding recumbent bikes here at Battle Mountain. Yes, I am here and to try to beat the, the world record. Um, my, my first time in the, on the recumbent bike, it was uh, not, not easy because it's a little bit different pedaling of my um, normal bike and uh, the balance. It's uh, not the same. So I have, I had a fear uh, when I crossed the car because uh, I feel, oh, maybe uh, if I turn my uh, underbar, I can go quickly uh, and uh, crash on the car. So it was not easy, but uh, I training uh, every day on the recumbent bike. So now uh, I'm feel uh, I'm feel uh, I'm feel good on the, the velo couché. <laughs> velo couché. So uh, I, and I got some shots of you uh, in the van training. Well, I guess warming up. Uh, I think that was yesterday. Working very hard. I guess my question is, you trained all those years as an upright uh, bicyclist, and now you're training to do the velo couché. How is it different? What uh, are the muscles that you use different? Is your training different? How is it different? Alors, first, I was a sprinter on the track. So I training only for sh very short, uh, short time, very short events. Distances. Uh, very short distance. Uh -huh. So maximum, it was uh, one minute. Full, full gas. Um, here for Battle Mountain, it's uh, four or five minutes full gas. So for me, it's totally different. So I change after Paralympic Games to Tokyo. I change my training every day. I uh, I try to be strong on the four or five kilometers, so um, uh, or five miles. Uh, five minutes, mm -hmm. sorry, yes. uh, or five miles. So it was difficult because during uh, 20 years, I training only to be strong on one minute. So change my my uh, type of muscle, my body, my uh, my uh, my uh, power on a long long effort. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was uh, difficult, but. Um, now I, I think I'm feel I'm feel good on long long effort and uh, yes I, I training and I warm up uh, in the van because uh, the morning sometimes it's too too cold outside mm. and uh, evening is too too hot so I prefer to stay in inside the van and uh, I I keep a good um, good temperature for my uh, warming up. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, the time difference of your writing is, is is very different. So you train differently for that. And the position is very different, right? So I'm going to ask you about that. Now, how does that affect your training? Yes, yeah, the, the, the position is uh, totally... Yes, almost totally different. Um, because on the normal bike, I am uh, s- s- mm, straight. I can uh, stand up mm-hmm. and I push all the pedal with all my body because all my body it's on the pedal. Right. In the recumbent bike, I am a uh, recumbent, mm-hmm. so um, I don't have my body weight on the pedal. So. The pedaling is very differ- different, and the, the blood in the in the body it's mm-hmm. already working different. Mm-hmm. And uh, all this sometimes I don't feel if I do a two hour uh, recumbent bike on the road, I don't feel my uh, my uh, t- uh, my f- my uh, foot. Yes, <laughs> you feet. get numb. Yes. Yeah, because nice. I miss the blood in my feet. <laughs> but. Um, um, I training, training, training to be stable, stable, mm-hmm. and uh, to feel good. And uh, every day, every day, it's like your training. And uh, um, I, I, I almost keep uh, two, two training every day, like before. I take my retire on the track, but finally, I continue. Uh, training every day to be focused on my goal to be this world record. So this is a really uh, uh, an educational challenge for you to, to do this. Right? Yes, of course, uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's a world record, so a world record is never easy to beat a world record. Um, and um, uh, like I say, um, it's uh, f- four five minutes full gas. Normally, me. I, I am strong on one minute, so it is very not easy for me. Everybody think, ah, oh, it will be easy for him, but no, 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 no. It can be easy for a road rider. If we take a professional road rider, maybe it's, it's easy for, for him because mm-hmm. he has the, the, the long power endurance power uh, to, to, to beat this world record. But for me, uh, yes, it's, um, it's a very exciting goal. Right. Because we don't know, it's not sure to, to beat. Okay, I have power, but right. it's not sure. And everybody is exciting about this, and me too, right. of course. Uh, Francois, so you've raced what, a couple of times here at Battle Mountain at this stage. Uh, tell me about the, the, uh, the runs that you have had so far. What has been your experience? Well, my first experience, it was uh, the qualification. So it was on the short, uh, short distance. Uh, to two miles uh, five. So for me, it's, this is good because it's short, it's short, uh, <laughs> right. it's short uh, effort. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm feel, uh, I'm feel uh, not bad, and uh, I was excited to try the the the, uh, the five miles. And uh, my first time in on the five miles, um, uh, I think it was uh, it was uh, not bad too. But uh, I start too too slowly. To show you, because uh, I have every miles, uh, uh, I have in my head the, um, the the miles per hour I must to be mm-hmm. at every miles. So I start too slowly, and after it's more it's difficult to accelerate on the last uh, last miles because uh, we go too fast and the wind uh, on the bike uh, break, break too much. So now I will try new strategy start a little bit quickly and uh, and maybe it, maybe it's possible because uh, I did uh, in last 200 meters uh, uh, 69 uh, I, I did uh, 136 kilometers average in last 200 so it was uh, not bad for the first time everybody say oh it's very good for the first time it's very fast and me I say no shit <laughs> not enough fast I am here to try to beat the world record and uh, I need uh, to, to be uh, almost uh, 10 kilometers uh, faster so you learned, right? Yeah, yeah, I learned, I learned, I take, uh, I took a good experience on this first run. So now uh, I will um, adaptation, Adjust, yes. yes, and to, to be fast. Good. Now, yesterday we watched you launch you st- at, the, at the start and you had a little difficulty at the start yesterday. Yeah, yes. Tell, tell me about how that, what, what, what happened? But on the start, uh, I crashed. 
uh, <laughs> and I was not happy <laughs> because uh, the 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 bike uh, it's uh, now it's uh, scuffed up. Yes, and uh, so it's not good for the for the speed. But uh, yes, I was not happy. Uh, but uh, we don't know if it's in me uh, to turn not good or if the the, the my pushman. I don't know in English. Uh, maybe. Uh, we don't know, but doesn't matter. Uh, it's not a problem, but uh, I think it's uh, it can be better. Right. And uh, if I am better, right. it will be. Uh, so just to complete that, uh, what happened? So yes, Francois took off, and they had an issue. He went veering off to the left and crashed. Yeah. And I know he was not happy, but his his crew, his start man, and all of them ran right after him, picked him up. Yes. And put him right back in the center of the of the road, and off he and, went again. Yes, and uh, go again. And uh, I try to be in my in my head, uh, very focused on what I need to do, and not ah oh, shit, I crash. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I don't think about uh, negative thing. I think only on the what I need to do to be fast. Absolutely. All right, Francois, let's just finish up then. So we have, uh, we're maybe halfway through the week here and uh, we've talked about what you've already done. What are your hopes? You talked about uh, that world <laughs> record. So w what do you think you'll be able to do? Uh, I just want to beat the world record. Uh, I know it will be very difficult. Uh, maybe uh, it will be not possible. I don't know. We will see in the end of this week, but uh, I am here for this. Uh, my first run give me confidence, give confidence to all the all my team. So they think uh, it's possible. Me, I don't have experience. It's my first time in Battle Mountain. So I I uh, listen my team. So if they say it's possible, you will uh, learn uh, quickly, and we will uh, put uh, make uh, adaptation. So uh, after, of course, it's depending the weather. So the wind, the hot, the hot, uh, hot air. The temperature, yes. Yeah, it's very important. And if it's too cold and uh, too windy, right? Of course. Uh, but this uh, we can uh, we cannot. Um, yes, these are things that are out of your control. Yes, yes. we can't control this. So we cross, finger cross, and, uh, <laughs> and hope for the we best. will see. Well, with that, uh, I think we'll finish up here, uh, Francois. Uh, Bon chance uh, at, at Battle Mountain, and uh, merci beaucoup for the interview. With pleasure. Thank you. Lincoln. Uh, I'm from the University of Toronto team. I'm here with a sort of retrofit of our old bike uh, Vortex. It's a new shell, uh, lighter design. Uh, it's called Cyclone. Um, and we're here to, I'm here to do a bit of sort of more training and get my, uh, get experience in Battle Mountain. Um, we're not going to be as quick as some of the camera bikes. Uh, as you can see, like our shell is not, not as uh, continuous over the top, but uh, give me a chance to get some practice riding, some experience in Battle Mountain and see how fast we can get it. I'm Rashab, I'm co-captain of the uh, UFT Human Powered Vehicles. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so this is Cyclone. Uh, it's a monocoque shell, so the the frame is built into the fairing. Uh, so that makes it very light uh, while still being strong. Um, the way we built this bike as well as Vortex is with a modular drivetrain, so you can just undo this quick release and pull this whole thing out, so it's very serviceable. Like we've got a two-stage drivetrain, uh, we've got both our brakes on the front, so we've got a rim brake and a disc brake on the front for more stopping power. The shifting is just regular cable derailleur, all, this is also a mechanical um, 
disc brake. We, we prefer mechanical disc brake. Because we don't want the fluid in a hydraulic disc brake to boil at high temperature. Oh, that's what you're saying about the fluid. I was yeah. wondering why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's... What's your name, sir? Let's not leave you out. <laughs> yeah, my name's Calvin. I'm the, uh, I'm the other co-captain of uh, the, the Toronto team. How we often run a lot of our projects is that we'll break it down into various kind of subsystems or um, component or yeah, subsystems or aspects to the bike and then sort of assign those a little bit to different groups of people. However, it is fluid in the way that there are a lot of larger manufacturing tasks that go into this that require all hands on deck. Um, Actually, so, how many people on this team? Uh, this it, massive? Yeah, maybe um, probably around 20 so overall. Nice. Around 20 overall. This particular bike we've first built for the ASME competition in 2016. And so one of, one of um, uh, when I joined the team in 2015, one of my first tasks was Athens, Ohio? It was Athens, Ohio, yes. Well, the um, viewers of the Laidback Bike Report will remember that we were there covering that, and uh, that was one of my first events to cover, so that was great. Yes, I saw you guys there. Yeah, and in this, in this case, we have our, as it's a monocoque shell, we have our reinforced um, uh, roll cage with structural foam, um, uh, over, over this enclosure here, and um, that's more than enough clearance to keep the rider in place, especially when they're seat belted and everything. Safety, yeah, there are, now you can see the big bar coming across. Yeah, the structural foam in here adds thickness, so then once we lay carbon over it, it's a very thick cross section and it's got a lot of stiffness, uh, and that adds a lot of rigidity to the structure. And then these latches, which are bonded in there, are used to to put the hatch on. And yeah, yep. so here's the hatch on. A, 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 a new, newer retrofit that we installed for this competition due to the higher speed nature. Um, so yeah, f uh, four latches corresponds to the four um, uh, the four attachment points on the inside of the hatch. Okay. This is the first vehicle I was involved with, and my kind of introductory task to the team was actually designing lights. So huh? uh, we don't have them on this time, but um, uh, we. Um, yeah, uh, we designed and cut these lights out of um, out of acrylic, and um, they have inserts in the back for LEDs. As for the ASME competition, this is a requirement, and we had um, we had fairly strong headlights um, and uh, turn signals built into the front and back. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for the tour. No problem. Thank you for That's a great way to send you off with the motorcycle going to the back here. Right, show me what you show me what you're holding there, Lincoln. Uh, these are my shoes. Obviously, shoes are very important in a streamliner because any foot movement and you're out of whack and you hit the side of your shell and you're completely off, so. Right, um, locked in, yeah. it gets you the most energy Absolutely. and no, least and energy off. Especially with me, I have very large feet. My, my heel and toe clearance uh, is under uh, under a half inch. So now, quarter. are you an engineering student as well and I just am. are into this? Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I'm a sec uh, going into my second year uh, at U of T. Um, I actually did a lot of the work to get the bike ready to go this time. Uh -huh. uh, it was built, like as they were talking about earlier, back in 2016. Um, but over the last, uh, this summer sort of, last couple months, um, put a lot of work in. Uh, there was a couple structural layups we had to reinforce. A um, bunch of drivetrain work, a little bit of uh, outer shell work. Some of it still needed to be done. Um, but the bike's in a state to be good to ride, so I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I am an engineering student as well. Uh, I'm not a trained rider. I've been doing training this summer to prepare for this. and. Uh, get experience on the bike, so I'm uh, able to ride here. But yeah, I'm a engineering student working on the bikes, just like them, part of the design team. Lincoln, thanks a lot. Good luck to you, pal. Absolutely, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay.
think I went faster. My pickup would be an Alto. 58. Wow, very nice. Were you happy with that? Um, yeah, I was hoping for 56, so yes. <laughs> Do I get a hat if it's illegal? Very good. Because it's a red one. You're the only one that went that Sausage way. man. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Woohoo! Let's see if we can get in here. I guess we can go up. All right. But another successful run in the books, Peter. Yes, no, my goal is, is uh, you know, not to deteriorate too quickly. <laughs> no, your goal in life. <laughs> well, yeah, and I have five children, so, so you know, I get I to gotta stay on top of things. You have to go. Okay. We are ready. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to talk. This looks like the fastest machine you have all together. <laughs>
Can you uh, take it to the top? Shit! Yeah. God damn, who's smoking in here? <laughs> I thought you went out for Mexican last night. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, we'll get out. Please don't touch the rotor. No, you don't want to. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I smoked from the day. <laughs> hey, you made it. Good well, to see you. Well, Where you been? Oh, that's smoking. Oh, she's done. That rotor is done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, no, they get red hot every time. I couldn't slow down. I is uh, someone else coming? Yeah, he's coming from here. But, uh, well, you did pretty good. You're going to go slow. Sure. Yeah, you wanted to
done. All right. You want me on tape you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not taped in. You're not taped in? No, no ma'am. There we go. Yeah. All right. Great job. Thanks. I don't think I broke my record. Let's see how it's close. Yo, Robert Iran cried a bit. It's not aligned right. It pulls to the left a little bit. Yeah. And the brakes still pull to the left a little too. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, we uh, were riding down the road in our car here at Battle Mountain. Uh, here's the uh, Big Chief Motel, and staying here are our good buddies, Russ and Barney from the UK. Here is the 77. They've come all the way from uh, England, and uh, they are racing here. Uh, Russ, you already had a run this morning. Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Hey, it went pretty well, yeah, yeah. We did 53 mile an hour on the run, everything nice and smooth. I wasn't putting too much power out, there was a little bit left, so yeah, I'm happy that it went, it went well. All right, well, so the folks have seen uh, a lot of this part of the 77. They hadn't seen the beautiful blue color that, uh, that you have added since we did our interview with you. Um, tell us what you're working on now. What's, how do you intend to improve since you got here? What, what's up? Um, so the main thing we're doing is the final drive sprocket. This is still on UK gearing, so we didn't want to change anything on the bike until we'd done the qualifying run. Uh, didn't want to tempt fate with things going wrong, so the final... So I went down the run at 53 mile an hour, I'd run out, I was in top gear and I'd run out, so we know we need to change the, change the gearing. So the 24 tooth on here, we're swapping for 17, which is that. So that goes in there, which means we're gonna to need to shorten the final drive chain slightly. Okay, and as Barney says, this thing fits in here like with a shoehorn, basically. Mm. It is so tight, right? So, Very tight, so we've had to drop the, um, 
drop all the pressure out of the front tire to, to get it out, it squeezes up. Okay, so your next run is this evening? It's this evening, yeah, quarter past six. Is that right? Quarter yep. past six, yeah. Right. So we're not gonna hold you up too much, I know you have a lot to do. Tell me real quickly, uh, what is this uh, jacket, this yellowish brownish, <laughs> disgusting looking thing on here? <laughs> it's a Kevlar shell, so it's basically for doing low speed runs and practicing. That When it falls, it hits the padded part of that, and scrapes along the floor and doesn't damage the fairing. But we went for it this morning, we were confident. We did a couple of practice starts this morning out on a road just over here. Um, we were confident that we'd, that we'd run it. Barney's got the starts really good. So yeah, we, we did it, we didn't drop it. I've cursed it now, we'll, we'll fall over every other time in the week. Right, maybe I need to edit that out first uh, so it won't <laughs> curse you. So. All right, Ross, thank you so much and good luck to you. We'll be talking to you again later. Thank you. Look at this perfect speed. This is like and look how straight the line is. This is this is professional stuff here. All right, Ross. All right, Ross. Yeah. Oh nice. He's very good. Good job. Yeah. That, that was legal. It was definitely, definitely legal. <laughs> well done, yeah. Yeah. Well done, yeah. There was no I wind. I couldn't push. I need a rest. Oh, okay. I think it was about the same speed, about 64, 65, but oh, yes. the heart rate was like 10 beats lower. Do you need help to get out? I knew after. No, oh, good. Thank you. Can you hold it? I will. Yeah. Actually, there are no cars, so we can. Did you see the crash of the guy in front of you? No, no. It's <laughs> tightened. Yes. In the trap. After, after the beat. Okay. Go on. How much we fell over at the start. Scratches on that side. Oh, no. Yeah, so we, had to, saw. we had to start on the other side of the road, so that was good. it threw the balance slightly. The way you would have been right behind the accident. It's alright, sorry, don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, say it loud. What? Okay. It's just, a, it's just the yeah, camera on the real side. Well, it's all it is. If you'd gone off on time, you would have hit the guy in the trap because they stopped the van in the trap.
All right, well, now we're here with a number member, uh, another member of the Italian team, Polycumbent, and it is Andreas Gallo. And Andreas, uh, you just rode this beautiful uh, streamliner. Tell me a little bit about this bike. Yeah, this bike is new uh, after uh, 2019, and uh, we have uh, construct a uh, new frame, uh, okay. uh, new fairing, uh, uh, new mechanic. Uh, we are uh, we have uh, a light tweak bike, uh -huh. and uh, we think it's fast. Uh, now, do you think it's faster? How is this? Tell me about this very last run that you just took. Are you happy with this run? Yes, I, I am happy, but I have a little problem with the screens. It's not fixed, and I have to to hold the screen with the with the finger, and I, I have to look uh, to uh, the road. I, I can push more uh, uh, as I I have to do for uh, for do my battle. But uh, today is not good, the weather, and uh, yeah, I am happy. I am happy. Happy with what it is. So, yeah, to just to explain a little further, so these riders only can see through these monitors, the screens that are here, and if it's fixed in one place, it's pretty good, but if it's moving around, then it's difficult to control yeah, the difficult. bike, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not simple, yeah. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you hope to continue to, we will get this fixed, and then you hope to improve the rest of the week? Yeah, I hope to improve. Uh, I hope to beat my best and uh, to reach my, my maximum speed. Uh, right. I don't know why. I, I, I what can number? Do, what would you I like? Do. I, I, yeah. I like to beat uh, 85 to take the hat. <laughs> of course. To get this that is it. my target, yeah. Very nice. Well, I, I wish you the best and I hope you can do that. Thank you for spending a little time with us. Thank you so much. Okay. When you are ready, you can go. You don't have to. Three, two, one. Can we go? Yep. Okay. I think I will also. Mi sto vedendo il mio zaino! Ok! Oh, no. 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 Oh,
Bravo. Okay. Good job. Good job. There's time. He can, he can breathe. Quando ha fatto? Quando ti dà? 95 Dai! Cos'è? Se io spingo di più All right, guys, we are here with Martina Sterano, and uh, very nice to see you uh, riding and uh, and this beautiful bike today. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me, tell me about this last run that you just did. Were you happy with it? Yeah, I'm quite happy about that. They um, keep out the Kevlar, and I didn't know about that, so I'm okay. I'm quite happy about that. The um, speed is coming. And it's you don't you don't know the speed yet, so yeah, but do, how yeah, do you yeah. think? What do you think about it? Uh, higher than yesterday? Oh, yeah, so you're yeah, about um, that. yeah. But we are not uh, we are far away from the record, so we are aiming for something better. So a little yeah. improvement each yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Each That's time is getting better and better. So I'm confident. Yeah. So I saw you come in and they took you out, and uh, you're on the Italian team. And I learned a little Italian from you. Okay. So you came out, and I heard you go crampo. Cr yeah. What is that? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like because um, the paddle is too strong for me and I can't leave it out so <laughs> it's something that not it's a lot of pain <laughs> so you were you were uh, you were hooked into your pedal and yeah. you couldn't quite get yeah. it out <laughs> yeah yeah I couldn't Very so, good. Okay. all right well thank you so much and good thank luck you. for the rest of the week thank you.
guys, we're here at the uh, finish at Battle Mountain and uh, with uh, some friends here. We have uh, Robert and Linda and Alyssa with us today. And uh, this amazing human powered vehicle that uh, Robert and Alyssa designed and built. And we're gonna talk to them about this. Uh, first of all, uh, Alyssa, hello. Hi. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how you got started in building and racing uh, human-powered vehicles. Well, actually, I've been riding bikes for a long time. And Robert told me about how everything went on out here, and I was super surprised and amazed. And then he suggested we build a bike, so we started, we started designing and building the bike. Now, how old are you right now, Alyssa? Currently, I'm 11. And when, you say you've been doing this for a little while, how old were you when you kind of got started and interested in this? Um, when I started first getting interested and told about this, I was nine. Yeah? Nine, yeah. All right. Yeah. Whose design is this to start out with? Like, what about the overall picture of this? The overall design of it was actually both of our ideas. And how'd you do that? Like, were you sitting down drawing on paper? Were you using a computer? How did that work? We were sitting down drawing on paper thinking of a design we could use. And you wanted to build it. Tell me the ideas behind this. So like speed, what were the criteria that you're using? Did it have to be really fast, really comfortable, really safe? What were you using? What were you thinking about? Uh, mostly safety and like the main idea was just for safety and we wanted it to, to be more comfortable for me so I could be in com comfortable in the bike. Because if you're comfortable, you're going to be able to go faster, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Robert, from your standpoint, uh, how does this young lady do as far as uh, designing and, and racing? W what's your impression of her? She's done incredible. She's an accomplished uh, machinist and welder and uh, many different trades she can do. Right, we, so we didn't even talk about that. And building, right? So yeah, you guys build it, it together. Yeah. Um, tell us what this uh, is. Listen, we'll go back to you. Tell us what this is made of and, uh, and how you built it. Well, the whole bike itself is made out of carbon fiber, but we had to build a whole plug for it. And it was really fun but and crazy at the same time. And the whole design of it was actually, we designed it of teardrops. That's why our name is Team Teardrop. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so it is kind of a teardrop shape. So, all right, what do you say that we uh, take a closer look at the, the teardrop and you can show us what's inside and, uh, and, uh, and how you built it that way, okay? Of course. All right. Well, it's... The steering is controlled by cables. It's cable steering, and we have a four-point harness seat belt for me because it's required. It wraps around me all the way. It has to. It's required, and it's controlled by cable steering. So, and we decided not to put the chains in front of my face because some other bikes have the chains running throughout the bike and in front of their face and stuff. We didn't want to do that, so the chain is down at the bottom under the seat running through. Alyssa, because it didn't seem safe to do that? Yeah, we didn't want to get grease on my face. <laughs> oh, because uh, you wouldn't look good if you had grease on your face. Absolutely. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. And it's strapped together by some Velcro to hold it all together. You have some next to the seats and down there. And the pedals, they're just normal. <laughs> I have some clip on Clip-in shoes, it's in the van though, to clip on so I don't have to like keep on readjusting my foot to the pedal when I'm going down the track. And it, we have 10 gear, and it's all back here behind all the seats. But it's really, we had a race, like it's, we had to buy a um, race out. seat, but that was not, I grew out of it and it was uncomfortable. So we just moved back to the one that we designed the whole bike around, so. Awesome, now, um, yeah, why don't at this point, if you wouldn't mind, why don't you go ahead and let's see you get into it. Tell me about the experience of, of riding the teardrop. It's really fun, it's loud in here when you're going down the track and pedaling, but, and the, just the learning experience is breathtaking, just building it as well. 
And most kids at my age don't really get to learn about this type of stuff and engineering and stuff. So for me, it's really good just to learn about all this type of stuff. And, 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 yeah, and how about, so you said it was loud. What, what about when you're racing? How, is it scary? What, how does that feel? It's pretty fun. It's not, it's not scary at all because I know where everything is on the track. Because before we even ran down the track in the bike, we, Robert took me on a drive to see the whole track itself so I know where everything was and what to do. So. Awesome. All right. So, and what are your what are your expectations for the rest of the week? You're going to be riding this a little bit more. What do you think you'll be able to do? I my expectations is to go fast and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you've already done that, but you're going to try to do some more of it. That's that's great. Um, right. So, how about uh, how about back home in school? Are there a lot of your friends who do this kind of this kind of thing? No, nobody in my school even comes close to trying to do this. All right, well, if the kids back in your class see this, you have anything you might want to say to them? Look right in the camera and tell them. <laughs> Hi, friends. <laughs> there it was. You heard it from Alyssa, guys. All right, Alyssa, thank you so much. And, uh, okay, let's, let's finish up maybe talking to Robert a little bit. You can stay there if you're comfortable. You can come on out, whatever you like. Robert, w uh, one thing I want to talk to you about, you, you were concerned as you were building this with Alyssa uh, about her growing right oh, yeah, and and yeah. so the, tell me about the adjustability and your thoughts about designing this with uh, a growing young lady in mind we uh we built every single aspect of it where it could be moved around that's one of the reasons for the cable steering because then you can move the handlebars and we can move them up and down tilt them we can uh, move the pedals they can actually be raised up and down the seat can move back and forth <coughs> so we could continually adjust it for her size as she grew and we also built it small enough that a very small toddler could actually fit in this thing. You move everything forward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a toddler, though. Pretty Not much, yeah. It'll actually go far enough. The seat will go all far enough old. forward, and the, the pedals and everything can be adjusted for a toddler. It's so much fun for the yeah. kids. So, All right, uh, Linda, anything you'd like to add to this? Uh, what, what has your experience been uh, with Alyssa and, and supporting her through this? It's been a lot of work, a lot of stuff going on with her, trying to get her to get, do the work, and she really enjoyed it once she got going. And all I'm here for is to drive and be the chaser. She has to put up with us. <laughs> yeah. That may be the hardest job of all. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for, uh, here, come on over here a second. We'll say goodbye. And I want to thank uh, Linda and Robert and especially Alyssa for uh, taking a little time out to show us the teardrop of this wonderful project. Alyssa, thanks a lot. Of course. speed was 21.22 miles an hour, and that is a new world record. So tell me what's going on. You had a little issue with the chain or something? Yeah, so we we did our launch um, and finally got the launch to work nicely. Uh, we, we were in first gear for like 150, maybe 200 meters, shifted into second, and pretty much right away after that, my chain fell off. So I just steered the bike the rest of the way while Bill uh, pedaled his brains out, and we made it work. So... Some 
seriously tight tolerances to obviously. Yeah, it's kind of wide and then narrow, so you have to stretch it around. Okay, Bill, go ahead. Tell us about it. Um, so this is a tandem speed bike. So we have two riders. Uh, they are back to back. The front rider sits in this position and looks this way. And me, the back rider, sits in this position and looks this way. And uh, our drivetrains are on the opposite ends, respectively. We have a seat that is the mid plane of the bike over here. Uh, as you can see, we use a camera system in order to provide vision. So we have two redundant screens in the front, a digital and analog display, and another uh, redundant digital display in the back. The displays, which aren't on right now, provide OSD or on-screen display. So that is uh, sensor data. So we have uh, speed, power, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, brake temperature, uh, GPS distance, a bunch of parameters that might be useful to the rider. Bill, I have a question here for you. So uh, we've talked a bit on the show about the display that's all that the driver sees going down the road. You, as a co-pilot, have your own display. Not only do you not see out, you have your own display and you're sitting backwards. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing what the camera sees going forward and you're sitting backwards looking at that display. That's correct. Okay, but you're not steering, so I guess. Uh, no, the purpose of me seeing forwards is so I can see the mile markers and I can see the condition of the bike so that I can decide whether to sprint and uh, like how smoothly the power needs to be applied. That's the most important decision I need to make. And so that brings up like communication. Like, so how much communication goes on between the two riders? Yell at each other. Yeah, it's it's loud inside the bike, but our heads are like our helmets are touching back to back. So if if I yell, Bill can hear me, and if Bill yells, I can hear him. Right. No arguments go on there, right? Uh, not yet. So the drivetrains are almost identical. We've got a two-stage um, off-the-shelf drivetrain. The only custom component really is the uh, the chainring. It's a 93-tooth chainring, and then we've got a stand like an off-the-shelf mountain bike cassette. On the front, I can only use the first seven gears. Um, then the, the shifter is out of range. We don't have clearance for it. The second stage is just a, a single speed transmission, uh, 40, 42 teeth down to a, an 18 tooth drive sprocket on the wheel. It's just got a simple little uh, idler to tension the, the chain there. And that's about all there is. The only difference between the front and the rear is that the second stage on the rear does a figure eight so that Bill can pedal forwards from his perspective and it drives the bike you point the camera overall forward. Over this yeah, you can angle, actually you can see it through the gap there. there. Uh, right, let's take a look at the rear here. You see here, if I like back, back drive the wheel a little bit, you can see the chain crosses itself uh, through an either. And there's about a 1.5 millimeter gap between this chain and this chain. So they don't actually rub each other. Uh, let's talk about the steering. <laughs> you have like a clearance of like nothing. How, how, yes. Tell us about that. So speed bikes in general have very little steering clearance. Uh, it allows you to keep the front really compact, keep the overall shape as aerodynamic as possible. We've taken that to the absolute limit on this bike. Um, as far as we know, this bike has the least steering angle of any speed bike. Uh, we're, if everything's properly aligned, we have 1.1 degrees in either direction. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. So a lot of that actually comes down to the skill of our, our launcher uh, being able to balance the bike pretty much perfect right from the start so that I can take it over and really I, I can't steer the bike below 25 or 30 kilometers per hour. And so it's kind of, we, we take it on faith at the, at the start that it's gonna be a good line. Um, we come in pretty fast as far as speed bikes go and then brake really hard at the end so we spend as little time as possible in that dead zone where we don't have control authority. How many people need to be to catch uh, this, this big bike? Uh, if we're on a good line and there's not too much wind, one person to catch is, is quite all right. Um, but it also depends on how familiar that person is with the bike. If you grab the bike and you start pushing it around, it's like when it's fully loaded with both of us in it, it's over 200 kilos. So nobody's going to keep that from falling over on their own. What's your name? Uh, Savo. Savo? Okay, go ahead. Uh, so on the bike, we have three discrete, uh, completely independently operating camera systems. So the two main ones I've powered on right now are run by Raspberry Pis. So they take in a digital camera feed, which I have right now installed. Uh, it runs through the Raspberry Pi, it collects data from a microcontroller, which it overlays. So for example, right now, uh, we can see that the brake disc uh, temperature sensors are a little malfunctioning. Let me restart that. Microcontroller on the board here collects all the data and puts it on the screen. So uh, 
the front rider and the rear rider have different amounts of information. So Calvin, since he's doing the steering, he wanted basically just the bare minimum, whereas Bill riding in the back, he was wanted some more information shown on screen. So we monitor the, mo the obvious stuff, so speed and distance to the end. Yeah. Uh, so we have a sensor on the rear wheel. Um, if you come around, I can point it out to you. So this sensor here uh, monitors the the wheel's rotation and the brake disc sensor. I think if I can spin the wheel slightly, we should be able to see. Yeah, so that's it, like picking up us, the spokes on the brake disc. And that's how we monitor speed one way and distance. We also have a GPS backup uh, in case uh, that sensor is unreliable for both uh, distance and speed, um, which is shown on the screen. You can see both values there. On top of that, we collect uh, power data from uh, and power pedals, and also heart rate data. And uh, did you design the tech on this? Uh, it's based on earlier work, but this this new system is basically all redone from scratch. Since I was the last system had some issues with uh, reliability. Okay. So this one's much more reliable. So if the on-screen display, for example, fails to work, the camera still works independently. So we've actually had, uh, right now, to be entirely honest, we've had some issues with the rear on-screen display, like the overlay, but the camera still works for Bill. So it's a redundant system. And they also have each indep independent power supply. So if one goes down, the others still operate. Calvin actually has a second system that isn't like a Raspberry Pi based one. That's just a basic, almost like a security camera feeding directly to a monitor. So it's very simple and that's our ultimate backup. Right. Uh, that's unpowered right now since the battery is charging and the camera's not installed. How about the structure? How about the skeleton here? Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the structure is a hollow carbon fiber frame. It's It was molded in about 20 different pieces and then kind of assembled like a big jigsaw puzzle. It's designed to provide a lot of protection for the riders, but also to, tra to keep the wheels as stiff as possible relative to each other for good stability at high speed. Like In addition to that, the, the shell is also structural. It doesn't really support any of the mechanical elements of the bike, but it's kind of the, the the first line of defense for crash protection. Okay, that sounds great. So finally, what are your hopes for this week then, Kelvin? What do you what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I mean, first and foremost, we want to break our, our own world speed record for the tandem category. So that's which uh, was 74 miles an hour. I I think we have a, a pretty decent shot of bumping that up um, past 80. And beyond that, we'll see. Like this bike was designed and in, intended to go pretty incredibly fast, um, but you know, one step at a time. All right. Thank you so much for your time, and good luck to you guys. So. Thanks. So Appreciate much. it. Okay. Right. Well done. Beautiful. Well done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right. Right. Yeah. Are you able to get the latches off? Yeah. Huh? They're all yeah. pushing against each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. My bike. You got it? Oh, you got it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take it off later. Okay, they can get out of that one? Yeah, they can okay. get out like right. Say someone just go either side of the nose yeah, and hold yeah. it because yeah. we're just pushing against each other. Hold on, Bill. Good one, Bill. Hold on, Bill. I have the step stool here if you want it, it's but fine. no worries. It's fine. How was it? Well, um, Bill lost the chain even earlier through. than I did. Hey, next oh, bike is just about fine. through. So that was my five mile run. <laughs> okay, let's get this bike off. The next yeah. bike is yeah. right here. Need a catch team. We Catching ball. We have to catch Adam. Yeah. Uh, well, someone has the front. I got here. I got side.
are here with Adam Hari uh, from uh, Australia here at Battle Mountain uh, to ride the Wahoo. So you may not know what I just said. So let's start with uh, saying hello to Adam. How are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. It's great to have you on the Laidback Bach Report. So Adam, uh, the Wahoo is here in America. It's a streamliner that was built by Larry Lem and you live in Australia. Give us the connection. How did this all come together? Uh, well, originally Larry had a junior rider that he was going to ride um, in one of his old bikes, um, but that sort of fell through about six weeks ago. So he gave me the call up and I jumped at the opportunity. So I, I bought a ticket straight away and started planning on how I was going to get over here and you know planned, a tra planned out a training schedule. So let's uh, perhaps fill in some background for folks who don't know. Adam, uh, you actually work on building bikes for racing here at Battle Mountain yourself. Tell us about uh, a, bit, a little bit of your history doing that. Yeah, so I, I originally came in 2015 where I was just a spectator just to learn what the sport was all about. And then over the course of a couple of years, you know, built a few training bikes and understood what a recumbent was and how to ride it and stuff. And then in 2019, I bought a second hand bike and um, came, bought it as oversized luggage on the plane um, and raced it then and got a 55 mile per hour hat, which is I'm pretty stoked on. I wear it everywhere. And um, since then, I've been building my own streamliner, which I hope to one day bring to Battle Mountain. And I've built it to the highest standard that I can possibly do, um, just so I know that it's going to do the absolute best speed that I can possibly do myself. So for now, I just want to get as much experience as I can riding down to 305, experiencing what it's like to ride at 50, 60 miles per hour, um, get that experience so when I come back, I'm ready to go. Right. All right. So that brings us to Battle Mountain this week. And uh, here we are about midweek. Can you tell us your experience so far? What have you done? And are you happy with what you've done? I'm happy with how it's going. It's like my um, learning curve has been steep, but my progression in skills has also matched that curve. So we, we did a few training runs before the event even started, just at a training track outside town. And um, after a few goes, tipped it a few times, but eventually started progressing with our, our starts. And this morning I started within a couple of steps, which is what you want to be doing every single run. In terms of speed, I've slowly been progressing as well. The um, qualifying round, I did 45-ish, and then the uh, first five mile, I did about 55, 56, and then the other day I did 60.05 with the Kevlar and slow tires. So I'm hoping once I take that off, I can go faster than the Australian record, which is 73, I think. Excellent. All right, well, I saw you finish today uh, on that run and you had some interesting, you had an interesting story to tell about the, the run today in terms of uh, uh, what your, your legs kind of hitting up against the steering and that sort of thing. Tell us, it's a tight fit. Tell us, how, yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so because it's not built specifically for me, my bike, I've molded the seat to my body and everything is like millimeter precision, but being another person's bike, you kind of have to try and fit within the parameters that they've built it for and they try and build it for multiple people. And my leg length and torso length is a li little bit different to what Larry's is, who he sort of built it around. So um, some of the things have a little bit tight clearance and my knee was hitting a handlebar and causing me to steer a little bit every time I pedaled, which is a bit scary, but. <laughs> yeah, especially at those speeds. So yeah. uh, that's, that's great. So, well, it sounds like you're progressing. You have high hopes for this week. Ultimately, what would you hope to achieve uh, by the end of the week? Uh, I would like the Australian record. 80 is very optimistic. Um, I don't think I'll be getting to 80, but I just want to go as fast as I can. I know that I can put out power and based on my power profiles, um, it's, it's getting me up around the Australian record. So if I could get the Australian record, get a 70 mile per hour hat, I would be absolutely overwhelmed. I'd be stoked with that. Yeah, we would also be excited to see that happen. Uh, just briefly, you talked about the power rating. What, what kind of power are you putting out? Uh, lead up, I'm aiming for around 220, 200 watts, 
and then with one and a half miles, about two miles out, I start to ramp to 300. And then from one and a half, I'm trying to do minimum 400 watts to, the other day I maxed out at 523, I think. So if I can hit 523 and sustain it for like a, a couple of seconds, maybe 10 seconds, that's when the, the speed really spikes. And um, you don't want to maintain 60 miles per hour for too long because you want to you peak and then just go through the traps and then slow down. <laughs> it's much more complicated than people really understand, and it's so much about timing and pacing yourself and such. So yeah, it's very complicated. So, all right, uh, any final thoughts, Adam? Anything else you want to share? Um, I, I originally I did plan on running morning and night every single day, but. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm scheduled to ride the first and second heat. I've put my name down for it, but I'm probably going to scratch both of those um, and save myself for tomorrow's morning conditions, which is supposed to be perfect. So currently Larry's working on the bike. We're going to polish the fairing and get it absolutely slick as possible. Adam Hari, thank you so much for spending a little right, time with us. Sir. Okay, thanks, pal. Here with uh, the inimitable, inimitable. We're here with Dave <laughs> Larrington, <laughs> and uh, Dave. Uh, Dave is uh, well. Dave, exactly. What is your position here at Battlemont? Um, well, this year I seem to be mostly driving the sweep car because uh, once the road is closed, we send the fastest available car up uh, up the course to make sure it's clear that nobody's stopped on the shoulder or anything. Because. Uh, we don't want to have any vehicles anywhere near the course when we're running the bikes. And uh, what is that sweep vehicle that you have rented uh, for use this year? Uh, this year it's just a plain standard ordinary base model Mustang convertible. We've had quicker ones in the past. <laughs> but... Uh, what would you say has been your top speed sweeping along uh, Route 305 this year? This year, well, the, the car is limited to about 122 miles an hour, so no matter how hard you press the gas pedal, it won't go any quicker than that. Did you press it hard enough to go 122? Oh yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hitting the limiter by the time you get uh, about a mile up the road from here. How, how fast have you in the past gone on sweep? I got 183 miles an hour in a Corvette back in 2008. And I think it was about five years ago, one of the highway patrol officers from town came out with his personal car, which is a Dodge Challenger Hell, Hellcat with 700 plus horsepower. And we got 187 going up the course with uh, three big guys in, in the car. 
All right, that's craziness. All right, let's uh, let's get back to uh, human-powered vehicles yeah. as opposed to uh, ice vehicles. Um, I guess I'd just like you to give us a summary. It is uh, Tuesday here at Battle Mountain, so there have been some amount of qualifying and racing going on since Sunday. So uh, if you can, give us your synopsis of what has gone on so far, what has caught your attention, uh, highlights and such. I uh, guess the highlight has got to, be, got to have been uh, Francois yesterday, yesterday morning, his first run on the full course and uh, uh, over 84 miles an hour. Which is uh, putting him right up with the the contenders. It's uh, the fastest bike was, was the same bike in 2019 with uh, Fabian Canal, and he ran 84.99. Having I think that was his second year competing here, uh, so he, he'd had a bit of practice, and uh, you know, he still so for Francois to get uh, get that close to him that quickly is uh, is pretty impressive. So this is uh, Francois Purvis that we're yeah. talking about coming from France. Um, he's quite a sensation here this year. Tell us, can you tell us a little bit about Francois? I, I don't know a whole lot about him, but he's had a, a long career as a, a racing uh, on the track, and uh, I think you know he's. Uh, I don't, can't remember what his speciality is. I think it might have been the 1K time trial. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's got an impressive record stretching back quite a long way. And uh, he retired as a, a pro racer after the Olympics last year. So yeah, he's uh, got a fairly impressive record. Right. And and typically we have amateur uh, riders from the teams that uh, kind of work at uh, improving their riding abilities until they get here, but not professionals. Yeah, we found the, we had sort of one or two professionals or you know, sort of really high class amateurs here. Is uh, Freddie Markham, for example, who uh, was the first guy to go over 65 miles per hour. That was before we started running here. He was, uh, he was first reserved for the US Olympic team in 1976, and he was due to go to the Olympics in 1980. But, uh, then the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, so the U.S. didn't go to Moscow, and uh, <laughs> Freddie was not happy about that. <laughs> of course. All right, and so I guess, uh, lastly, give me your ideas about the rest of the week. What do you anticipate um, being some of the highlights coming up? We're going to be leaving here shortly, so give us an idea what you would expect to see this week. Um... Well, you know, looking out down the road at the moment, it all depends on the weather. Uh, you know, sort of various people have been looking at 20 odd different weather apps and going, it's going to be terrible all week or it's going to clear up by Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday evening. But um, yeah, expecting, um, expecting Francois to go even faster if the, the weather improves. And uh, hopefully Andrea Gallo from the Italian team with, with his new bike, who be the bit of luck and decent weather. You hope to see him getting up above 85 miles per hour as well. He was he, he was the second fastest in 2019. And uh, maybe the, the women on the Italian team getting close to the world record, which was set in 2019. That was uh, 78 something, I think. I can't remember the exact figure. And, um, and uh, see whether Toronto can improve on their tandem record which uh, they said in 2019 as well. They were, we were hoping to have three tandems competing in 2020 before the uh, the pandemic hit hit the place. But um, the human power team, Delft Amsterdam, had their funding pulled, so they were actually building their bike and had to stop. And uh, yeah. nobody's heard a word from uh, the University of Liverpool team. They were supposed to be building a tandem as well. So uh, it's just Toronto with uh, with yeah. Titan. Yeah, some yeah. tough times for some yeah. of the other teams. But all right, sounds great. David, thank you for taking a little time again to uh, share your thoughts with Always Layback Back Report. Always a pleasure. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Dave.
what you got for me? Well, Nick, uh, on behalf of the Laid Back Bike Report, uh, we would like to present you with one of our famous uh, hats. These are priceless, but as far as I'm concerned, you deserve the best. Here is a hat for you. Okay, mount it, please. My hands is busy. I'm mounting the hat on Nick's head. Okay. And Nick, uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, the uh, the drone video. Trey's here with us, and um, you're sharing the the, uh, the the drone video that you took. It's uh, amazing, and we're gonna when we make our uh, our laid back bike report uh, event video, we're gonna use some of that uh, some of that great drone footage. Thank Gentlemen, you. yes. Below that hat. I have little hair, and below hair, I have little memory. And what is your name? Would you report to my viewers? Yes, of course. My name is Gary Solomon. I'm the host of the Laid Back Bike Report. And I'm Trey Burgoyne. And Thank you very much. Folks, uh, I am a retired diver, and I do my drone. So if you put that, it means we're taking off. If we put that, we're going deep in a diving language. Bye bye for now. It's important to know that Trey and I would not be able to be here at Battle Mountain covering this for you without some amazing sponsors who have uh, supported us in, uh, in our trip here to Battle Mountain. Who are those guys? Well, Cat Trike, TerraCycle, EcoCycle, Connecticut Yankee Peddler. Sunseeker, Azub, and our pals at Wiz Wheels.